Now it's time to talk about the new coming quarterbacks in the Pac-12. We're going to take a look at guys from around the conference. There are players on campus who are heir apparent at all of these schools. And so we're going to take a look at some of the snaps these guys took last season to see what we can expect coming up. Starts right now in the film room. Hey, everybody. Mike Pulaski here. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. You notice I'm wearing my green today. That is my Oregon green. I'm sure my Cal fans don't love to see me doing that. But we're going to talk about quarterbacks who are going to be newcoming starters around the conference. If you dig football content, if you like reviews in college football, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. That way you get notified every time I have new videos coming out. Give me a thumbs up if you dig what we already did on Pac-12 quarterbacks and if you want to see more of it. Also, please leave me a comment down below. Happy to answer any questions that I have answers for. Let's talk football. Right now, we're heading to Eugene. Last year in the conference, the Pac-12 conference, Oregon had the stud of quarterbacks, the marquee quarterbacks in Justin Herbert. Obviously, first round pick, was a great football player, four years. We got to see him play a couple injuries during that time. We got to watch his game evolve over the course of the years. They've been very good over the last several years. They've had great quarterbacks coming through there. All the way, you go back to Marcus Mariota, then Herbert. All these guys that have been very good within the system. The system is good for quarterbacks. They love to run the football. They pound the rock. They run the power running game. They run the zone running scheme. And so they do things to help quarterbacks out. They've been able to recruit really well and bring in athletes. But now they have to replace a marquee guy. When Mariota took off, Everybody was concerned. Justin Herbert enters and becomes the great quarterback. Now, who do they replace Herbert with? Well, they have a quarterback on campus last year through 15 passes named Tyler. I believe it's Shuck. That's how it's written in my broadcast notes. He's a guy that was the number one player coming out of the state of Arizona. He threw for 3,000 yards in high school, threw 30 touchdowns, five interceptions, great ratio, and was an exceptional football player in high school. He got some snaps last season. We're going to take a look at his game film, break that down to show you what you can expect. Let's hit the film. So here we are, Oregon versus Nevada. Now, this game is already a blowout at this point. It is 49-6. to six. Herbert had a banner day, and Oregon physically is just really outclassed this Nevada defense. And so we're going to take a look at some of these snaps from a young quarterback in Tyler Shuck, who was the heir apparent up in Eugene. As I said, he's a guy who has great high school statistics, great physical size, 6'5". They've got him listed at 219. So he's going to be kind of a carbon copy of Justin Herbert, who came in at 6'6", around 220. And so Another tall guy, athletic guy, great high school creds, and highly recruited quarterback. This first play, you're going to see Oregon running just a straight sprint out. Man's going to come in motion, block that edge. Back is going to try to log that end. You're going to get a deep, what I used to call a whip route, in and back out. And then a fake stock block here to the flat. As Shuck comes out, his read is going to be high-low, but you have straight man coverage from Nevada. Here's the problem with being a backup quarterback going into a blowout game, is that oftentimes you'll get that second offensive line, you'll get second skill guys, and so the offense isn't functioning at quite the same level that it was to get to that point. So we'll run it through here quick, and I'll show you something which I think is pretty impressive for a young quarterback. This is obviously sudden change. Oregon has the ball on, what, the seven-yard line? And so it's sudden change coming into the game. When you're a young quarterback and you're coming into the game, down here in the red zone, you are amped up. You're trying to make something happen, trying to make a play. You're thinking, I'm going to rip it for my first shot, score a touchdown, and so you got a lot of nerves going. Shuck, though, when he gets outside on this route, he sees right here, there's nobody open. Fully covered, fully covered. This guy coming across the back of the end zone has a man right on his shoulder, and he's starting to see these white jerseys and pressure from right here. 
young quarterbacks will oftentimes throw this ball into coverage somewhere, try to force it in the corner, try to make a play with it. Shuck doesn't, even though he's running off the bench for sudden change, first snap in the game, he still keeps his head and throws that ball away and takes a shot. So a couple things that I think are pretty impressive are, A, he kept his wits and he threw the ball away. Didn't try to throw one in, didn't try to force it, didn't throw the interception. But B, he has some courage. Here's a guy, knowing he's about to get hit in the teeth, and rather than take the sack, he does the smart thing with the ball and gets rid of it, knowing he's about to take a shot. And so that's a smart decision, and it's some courage up there as a quarterback. So two good checks for him so far as a young quarterback. Let's take a look from the end zone. You can see here. He's actually fanning those arms because he's not loose. It was sudden change. He's trying to get his arms loose, ready to throw. But he steps in, get the motion across, looking out to that flat. And he gets outside, nothing there. Smart play. First down in the red zone. Don't force it. Throw that ball away right out of the back of the end zone. Good one. And he takes a shot. And again, toughness, courage. I like that. Now you get to see how he's going to operate in that RPO game. Oregon running that RPO inside, whole line blocking run. You're going to get released by your H-back upfield. Block out front and the screen game right here. Shuck's key on this is going to be this defender. If this defender stays back and stays outside and honors that screen, he's going to hand that ball off inside. If the defender comes, then he's going to pull it and throw the screen. Now, here's where you can see those nerves by a young quarterback. All amped up, all keyed up, second snap down the red zone. You can see Nevada now creeping up. They've got that zero coverage on, and so they're playing straight across man. They're definitely going to bring pressure. Two guys to cover down here, which means he's definitely going to come. So as a pre-snap, you should get this, that he's going to throw the ball. Takes a snap. Makes his key. This guy's coming. And now he's all amped up. He's going to pull this thing out in a hurry. And you see as he steps back, never quite gets to bounce. A little wide. falling back and throws it out there a little high. So it doesn't affect the play. Receiver makes a nice catch. Those are some nerves. I totally get it. I've been in this position myself as a young quarterback coming in the game, first snaps, all geeked up, throws the high one, but his receiver makes a nice catch and a great job by that receiver getting back in behind the block, making the first guy miss, getting back in behind it. Take a look at that from the end zone. So seize it. Look at that pressure coming in. Slow it down real quick. Never really found the handle on that ball. That's the first thing. You gotta watch this ball hit your hands if you're a quarterback. Right here, see his head is already off. He's he's looking out here to his key already. So he's not watching that ball hit his hands. So this in part is why he was inaccurate with it. You gotta catch that ball first. Puts it down, still working on getting the grip on that ball as he's coming out. Finds it. Let's it go in a hurry. And a great job by the receiver to get in the end zone. So, made the play. Could be cleaner, but okay. Second play for a young quarterback. I'm good with that. So, here's a real clean look at that Nevada 3-3-5, right? Three guys, three guys, and then five across the back side. Again, they're going to come with the RPO game. This time, Oregon's going to send this back out on that wide motion. Coming with the RPO, front side zone. These guys all blocking zone, front side. Underneath run here. Shuck's going to be keying this defender. As the motion comes across, if this guy flies, he's going to hand that ball off inside. But as it comes across, if he stays in this box, then they got a screen to the outside. In this case, it's good read. This defender stays home. And so 
Shuck lets it rip on the screen to the outside. Right on the fake. He just forgoes the fake because he sees nobody flies out. And lets it rip. Good ball. Accurate ball. Very catchable. Got his feet set that time. You can see. <clears throat> you can see next series. Now he's more comfortable. Gets it out and up to his athlete on the flank and lets him roll. And this is, I mean, Oregon just physically as a team outclasses Nevada here. You've got these receivers doing a fantastic job blocking. That is earning your scholarship check right there if you're out in front blocking like this, holding guys off, letting your back get to that third level. And again, just physically, Oregon, the better football team. You can see it here. We'll take a look at Shuck's feet from the back. You can see here, stays low, just a cheesy fake inside. Not really giving him anything. Wanting to get that line flow moving this way. Everybody going this way. Just keeps his head down. But then when he stands up, he gets tall. Gets those feet set and bangs it. Nice job getting that out to his back, letting his athletes make a play. So, so far we've seen the screen game. Not a lot to go on there, but that's a nice pass. Made the right read. So here, Oregon's going to call a double screen. Similar formation to what we just saw. You're going to see motion out of the... You're going to see motion out of the backfield again. This time, still got that 3-3 inside for Nevada. When motion comes out, Nevada's now going to take a linebacker to run with him to the outside. And I don't know if that's the key for him on this play, not being in the huddle or the quarterback room. But he's going to give that fake. He's going to fake the screen throw to the outside and then turn back around and try to give it to a back underneath here. Now, this back ends up getting grabbed down low and there's nowhere to go with this football. And so it kind of forces it in a little bit. Fake on the screen. This guy gets grabbed and he almost throws a pick. You'll see him right here. Spins around. You got to recognize that white jersey. You cannot throw it into traffic like that. So, not the best decision. I can still write that off to nerves, but have to be under control. At this point, it's your third series in the game. You've got your feet underneath you. If you see that, you just bury that ball. Skip it at him. That way you don't get the grounding penalty. Watch it from the backside. I like this. He's getting his backs lined up. These guys are in the wrong spot, so he's getting them to switch, so he's got the right guy in the right place. So he knows the offense, he knows formations, and he's getting his guys in the right spots. Motion out, and you can see when motion goes out, backer takes off with him, and that might be the trigger that brings him back to the inside. I'm not sure I wasn't in the huddle with him. So this might be just a called double screen, trying to get influence out here, get guys out of the box, and then drop it off on the screen underneath. You can see fake it out there. Nope. Comes back. Right there, your cat's covered. This guy is all over your back. As a quarterback, you want to skip that ball right there. Don't worry about it. Don't throw the pick. Don't make that mistake. Just get rid of it, burn it, and come back on the next down. But instead, he tries to force it in there, and he almost doesn't get away with it. Luckily, these big cats don't have very good hands. So, almost made a crucial error here, but the big guy can't catch, so he doesn't get away with it. And, on top of that, Oregon gets the holding penalty, and you can always tell when a dude's got his arms up like this, wasn't me, I didn't do it, I swear I didn't do it, he knows he got caught for holding. All right? Now we're under center. Drop back pass. You are going to get a wheel sit. 
and a wheel sit here. So really a four vertical concept, but the two outside guys are going to sit down. Single high safety in the middle. And as a quarterback, that means middle's closed. But if you've got these two verticals running up the hash, you can work him. He's going to start to get a little bit of pressure up in his face. He's got the back on a check arc or check down. And what he needs to do is as he starts to get that pressure, he needs to check that ball down to his back. And again, young quarterback, so I give a lot of leeway to these guys because they haven't seen a lot of game action. There's a lot of big nerves. You feel a lot of adrenaline here. But right here, you can see this lineman starting to get his shoulder turned. This guy's doing a nice job getting hands off him. He's going to get some pressure upfield. And so as it moves forward, feeling that pressure as a QB, dump that ball right here. He's still looking down here trying to make something happen. Well, this guy's deep running with him in the middle. This guy's playing into two. He's right in between them. There's no way you're going that way with the ball. And as a quarterback, as you start to feel this pressure come up at you, you need your eyes to drop to your near receivers. And so he should be checking this ball down to the back. Just get up on your toes, dink, stick it right on him, and let him make a play. He's got all this room back here where he can make something happen. I mean, he's got more than the size of the O to make something happen back there. And so as a QB right now, feel this. Dump it here. And even if you have to slide here, you got plenty of room to work with in here. A nice dish. Lyman doing a good job. Take one step, dunk it there, and let him be off to the races. Instead, as he feels that pressure, he turns into an athlete. Now, he does a nice job running this ball, but if he just slides, release. That's a good shot. And do what you're supposed to do as a quarterback. Get the ball to the hands of the athletes. So instead, he escapes. Makes a nice run. A little bit of shades of Herbert there. A big guy who's athletic. Can pick up some extra yards pretty fast as he gets outside that pocket. Nice little move. Make a couple guys miss and pick up the extra yards. So that was like second and 22, I think. Now we're looking at a big chunk of yards he picked up. And again, courageous, not scared to run the ball. Picked up about 14 yards and gave his team a chance. Again, you're just going to see the end zone play here. He's got a little time. Here's the problem. For me, his eyes drop right here. He's not looking at this cat. His eyes are right here on the rush. Don't drop your eyes to the rush. You need to feel the rush. Take a simple step over, and here's your guy. Nobody around here. He can make all kinds of plays. He can turn it up anywhere. Just get him the ball and let him do the work. But great run. Outstanding athleticism. Good job picking up all the extra yards in that play that he had. Now, third and nine. Nevada got some pressure coming. You can see these guys kind of nosing down. This guy's straight man on the backside. As a QB, once you've seen these reps enough, you know, and if you haven't seen my video on how to determine if a blitz is coming or where it's coming from, this guy down low, this guy over the top, he's got nothing to do here. You know he's coming. They're bringing all of these guys because they're down. This guy's looking real toesy, so he's coming. So they're trying to bring that four-man side to the field with that safety pressure, and third and about nine to go, they're trying to get Shock to dump this ball off underneath so that they can make the tackle here. As a quarterback, understanding that, Oregon has a little dip-and-go route here and a quick hitch in the wake. Backside, I believe he's running a go. But Shuck's going to work out to the field. His back is going to forego the fake to pick up the outside rush, so it's a good read by the back. But if you know that as a quarterback, and you'll see him point it out, get rid of this ball right now. This guy's off. Get your athlete the ball in space real quick. 
and let him make a play. He holds it for a beat too long, and as a result, they end up not getting the first down here. So he's trying to give the fake. You can forego that fake because your back is going to sit. Get that ball out earlier. If he can get that ball out right there when he hits his third step, now this guy can do something with it. You got kind of a pick and maybe a blocker right there too, but at least give him some room to do something with that ball. You know you got blitz pressure coming. Everybody's coming here. Linebacker's coming late when the back blocks. So just get that ball out. I know it's third and long. You're looking for the long one downfield, but this one could get it to you. He could break it in this in this route. A little late with it, but again, he stands in, makes that throw, even knowing he's going to take the shot. So I like the courage. I like the toughness. As a quarterback coach, former quarterback, I can work with that. I like his toughness a lot. So here's the final play I want to look at, and I like this play. I like the read. I like the way he makes this happen. Another RPO. Oregon giving that power look, wrapping that guard, trying to block inside. You got six cats in the box. As a quarterback, Shuck is reading this defender. If he stays high, he's going to give it on the power, I believe. Again, I wasn't in the quarterback meeting or the play call, but that's the way I'm seeing it. Got a little bubble over here, but this is his key. And if this guy comes down low, now he's got this seam route over the top of him. Does a nice job of reading that safety on the fake. As you can see, safety bites down. He pulls it and makes the throw. I'll run it back for you and telestrate that real quick here. This safety has bit down. He's in. Receiver is climbing on him. There's no way that guy can get back in position. Shuck doesn't hand it off. He's about to stick that foot in the ground and drive this ball. Foot in the ground. Here's the other piece I like. See that? Heels in contact. Nice flat foot in the ground. Ball's high in front. Weight's loaded on that back glute. Eyes on his target. He's going to throw it off his ear right down the field. Let's it rip. Even though, again, he's got pressure coming. He knows this is coming, but he still stays in there and drives this one with anticipation. This guy's still covered from his view, but he knows he's going to pop out here. So he throws that with anticipation, with pressure in his lap. And throws a great ball downfield, catchable ball for his receiver in a great spot to move the sticks. I'll let you key it with him. Right here, you can see eyes are on that dude. As he starts to come downhill, he knows he's going to pull this ball and make the throw off the back of his head. Boom. Safety's down going, uh-oh. This has not broken across his face yet, but he knows he's got it. Sticks that foot in the ground. All of his cleats in contact. He's going to let it rip, and it hasn't even cleared yet. So good anticipation on this ball as well. Throws it to the open space called throwing your guy open. Whoop, right up the hash. This guy has to intersect it. Nice ball. And here's my receiver coaching point. Don't let a catch make your feet stop. You got that ball. You can catch that. Keep running with it. Set your waist. But instead, he bobbles it a little bit, goes down to secure the catch. That's a great read and a great throw by Shuck. So what are my thoughts on Oregon's quarterback opportunities for next year? I think they're in pretty good shape. Obviously, you lose the marquee guy. You lose Justin Herbert, who's a first-round draft pick, has been the guy for your team for the last four years. But I think Shuck shows a lot of potential. I like, once he calmed down, the way he threw the football, he's pretty accurate. 
I liked the fact that he was making the right reads. Now, the screen, obviously not great, but he's driving the ball in with anticipation. He's accurate on the swing pass to the side. He's got a lot of upside. He's a big cat. He can run. He's mobile. So he's going to stretch some defenses different ways. I like what he offers as a player. Oregon's going to run the ball. They're going to run the power. They're going to run the front side zone. They're going to run the counter. They're going to run that fly sweep. And so you know they're going to run it. He just needs to grow up in that offense. Now, how does COVID affect him? How does not getting the reps affect him? I don't know. It's going to affect everybody the same way. Nobody's getting reps right now. And so he's going to have to do a lot of hard work, a lot of film study, everything in the offseason to keep improving his game. But I think he's got potential. I absolutely love, love the fact that he has toughness. To me, accuracy is one, toughness is two for a quarterback. You can build everything else around it. And he's got both of those, I think. If you like what I'm doing, make sure you subscribe, ring the bell. That way you get notified every time I have content. Give me a thumbs up if you understand a little more. If you like the new Oregon quarterback, if you don't like him, tell me why. Please leave me a comment down below. Happy to answer it. Love to hear from you. Appreciate you watching. This has been the Quarterback Film Room. I love talking about the game. Love bringing it to you. I'll bring you more soon.